What's up everybody, Jesse with 97 here, and today I'm gonna do an achievement guide, my first one, and I'm gonna make sure it's on this game called Fractured Minds. Fractured Minds is actually a really good game, it's really fast, it takes 10, maybe 8 minutes to complete if you're not going for all the achievements, just blazing through the game at least. It's not a hard game either, it's supposed to be a puzzle game, but there's no puzzles whatsoever. You just look around, that's it. There's no like, oh, you gotta go here or go there. It's just open this, do that, that's it. It's a British game, so it probably makes sense why it's not challenging or anything like that. The whole game is basically a genuine insight about mental illness. Like for people who are living with the mental illness and experienced it before, basically. The story's not really there. There's not much story either, but it's actually a pretty fun game nonetheless. There's three missable achievements, even though one of them is completely missable. And for a final note, I want to say that I had to cut some of these because I forgot that there was glitches in this game that I guess after four years they still haven't fucking fixed them so I will show those glitches because I gonna have to because certain achievements I already got and I have to basically show the people basically and I'm gonna have the entirety of my gameplay to show to you guys so once you go into the game you get this little quote living life somewhere else in your mind is nothing more than being a prisoner where you are what a nice quote. So after that quote goes off, you're basically waking up black and white. And then all of a sudden your door opens up. And it's not your uncle about to do some unspeakable acts to you. No, it's some kind of monster thing. But don't worry, it was just a bad dream and you wake up to chapter one. So once you wake up, the first thing you gotta do is go to the door. That way it will be able to unlock all the keys. As you see here, I made sure to show everybody why there's no keys here until you get to the door, then they all spawn. You can pick up all the keys if you want, but all you need to do is pick up seven keys anywhere you can find. Until your room just completely goes black and white with a lot of words on your walls, I'm watching you, I hate you, I see you. And every single time you pick up a key, you will be able to see the words wrong key on there. Your achievement will pop. This is where I'm going to cut the video because right here I got stuck on the chair area, so do not go in this area. If you do, you will have to restart your game, because there is no jump button, there's no way to get out. You will be soft locked, I believe is the term that people use for these types of glitches, and you will not be able to get out at all. But anyways, once you get the achievement, there's a picture on the wall right next to your bed. Just press the A button, or square button whatever button is your action for whatever device you're using grab the key and then just go straight to the door and then we get to chapter two emptiness this one in the next chapter do not worry about anything else all you have to do is complete the chapter so all you have to do is go to the purple present, open it up, grab the tail, go to the pinata, shake it until you get a pin. This way you'll be able to pin the tail on the donkey, but don't do that yet because you have to go back to the table and open up the red box. You'll be needing to wear a blindfold and it does not matter where you perfectly align the tail as long as you pin the tail on the donkey. Now once you pin the tail on the donkey, a storm starts a brewing. Scary stuff happens because now it's their birthday song happening and you have to go blow out those candles and make a wish. The wish here is hopefully I survive. But once you blow out those candles and make a giant wish, go to the blue present, take the key and go straight to the door. And once you go through the door, you'll go see a hallway entering into chapter 3 with words on the wall saying, I like the rain, it helps me be distracted. Chapter 3 is basically the most easiest chapter in the entirety of this game, because there's nothing to basically look around. So all you have to do is go to the sofa and you'll see a magnifying glass. Just pick it up, go straight up to the globe, and you'll now be inside the globe.
And once you're inside the globe, you just have to go inside the house, which is actually pretty cool because once you go inside the house, it's actually your room that you're in right now. But all you have to do is, again, go on the sofa, grab the key, turn around, all of a sudden there's a door right behind you. Ooh, scary. And you just go through the door. Like I said, Chapter 3 is not really that hard. It is your comfort zone. They're trying to tell you don't leave because you won't like it out there. Basically telling you that going outside is a scary place, which is the setup for Chapter 4, Paranoia. Now, this one is the missable achievement if you do not pay it close attention. To complete the chapter, you have to cross the road to look at a billboard, a sign, whatever you want to call that white thing with patterns. You see four codes. Behind these people are basically symbols. You have to press on the people in order the right order in order for you to unlock the door but do not do this and go through it yet there is a monster you need to look for it takes random amount of times you do not know when this guy is actually going to show up you he would literally show up before you even finish or after you finish in three to five minutes people say that it takes roughly around but at times he doesn't even show up at all and he only shows up once so if you do not see him uh, for at least three to five minutes just kill yourself how to kill yourself well there's a car that keeps driving around just jump right in front of the street but if you do see the monster make sure to watch out because if you do die you would have to restart the entire thing and by that meaning not only doing the puzzle but waiting for the monster so the monster never showed up for me which is why i'm saying kill yourself for some reason it's not bad to say in this context because no joke i'm gonna show you everything i did i made sure to wait he never showed up I, i'm gonna fast forward it until i died and redid the puzzle he was right there to the taking so it's basically just luck and chance at that point but just that's the only reason why it takes longer for this game to do it. it's just because of this one guy which he is a fucking asshole about but he's very easy to spot out he's bigger than the other ones he has a face but once you complete the puzzle and you find the monster go inside that dark alley which basically is right next to the billboard at the left you go inside and just wait you'll just see alarm clock going off and then i guess the ceiling just going to crash right on top of you going into chapter 5 in the little hallway where you are going into the water. So right after that ceiling crashes on you and you wake up, you'll see just this door with floating objects. It's not that hard to progress, so just do your little just walkity walks to the door and you'll be into chapter 5 sinking. For this one, it's easy as hell, but what you gotta do is find the battery, but before we do anything, make sure you get caught by the alarm system, aka just walk up to the big red circles three times, and the game will also mock you as you do it, which is also pretty funny. Now for the batteries. One battery is in the middle of the TV rack or stand. I don't really have these so I don't know what the hell they're called. So you just have to pick up that battery and into the kitchen it's the same thing in the middle. This one's a little bit harder to get by because you have to watch out for the alarm as it's really close. So once you open up the door, quickly grab the battery. If you didn't do it right like me, you're going to have to basically watch it. And then hopefully you'll do the loop so you can do it real fast. Go to the remote. Put the batteries in. Now go to your TV as it's shown you a hidden message. Haunting your world, living beneath the shadow, the invisible enemy. Nice little message, but that's not the message we're really looking at. There's red numbers on there. 0834. That is the 
number to disarm your alarm system, so all those red big dots will be going bye-bye soon. So just go to the door, on the left there's a little control panel, click on it and just put in your codes and the alarm system will shut off. Once the alarm system is off, open the door. And oh god, it's the person that we saw on the street. It looks like the monster is going to help us out on our draining problem. We're gonna sink down with the water to the last chapter. Chapter 6. This one is the final, and there's nothing else you need to worry about besides completing. So all you have to do is go straight and see the heart. Turn around and the monster's right there. Scary, I know. Very scary. He's gonna kill you all, but don't worry, it's an easy thing. Even though if you don't know what you're doing, all you have to do is go to the valves and just basically just spam every single one. He's gonna keep teleporting, so there's no chance of you actually really getting him. It's not that hard, honestly. I basically just literally just randomly pressed all four and then just did whatever. After that, you won't see him in the main lobby anymore. You have to turn around and which will be at the heart and you just turn the final valve and you are done. Chapter 6 is complete. You would think you would be able to survive the monster, but unfortunately the monster already corrupted your heart, turning it into black like some fucking villain from any single plot device in any single movie or TV show. Filling it with ooze, making you really turning into the Venom and Spider-Man. And at the end of the day, gives you the mirror, and now you realize you are also a monster. The only issue that I have with this game is that it's very freaking short, and there's really no hardness to it. Besides the chapter 4 missable achievement, because you would never know about the achievement unless you looked up a guide. It's basically sad about that one. There's, if only he had like a hidden message where it's like, oh, you have to like find out a different pattern and the monster will appear or something like that. Like if you get it too much wrong, you know, like what the keys did, but it's not really as a great game. If it was longer, yeah, it would make sense. It's a $2 game, so you wouldn't really expect much from a game basically giving you a difficulty and stuff like that. So yeah, pretty much a good game. Easy completion, so if anybody wants to get this game, and you should recommend it to other people who want to achievement run, it's going to be an easy game for them as well. That way they can get an easy thousand gamer score with only 10 achievements they need to grab. And that's it. Like the video if you like it very much, press the dislike button if you're a dick, but don't worry, they censored your numbers, so now you'll be secretly a dick. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I'm Jessing197. I may have turned into a monster, suffer from mental illness, but hey. At least I got 10 achievements and it adds up to a thousand gamer score. And in the end, isn't that really all that matters, achievement hunting? What the fuck do you mean no health is more important?